Hey, we did a Bricks video a few days ago and I felt like I rushed the single post template and the single product template a bit. So we're going to be doing a little bit few more in-depth videos. So you're going to see them coming out rapidly over the next few days. So today we're going to focus on the single post template. Now, for those of you that don't know, Bricks Builder is a WordPress theme. I mean, it's got a ridiculous price at the moment. I've just got to stress that out. $199 and limited websites, a lifetime. Those prices are bound to change at some point in the future, so I would get it now. But the great thing about this is it's a WordPress theme. And what I would normally do where I would use a page builder and I might have like a page builder, the pro version, and I might have other plugins as well installed on top of my theme. I'm doing I'm going to do everything at the moment with no plugins installed. Right, this is just pure bricks builder theme and it is amazing at what it does. Posts is kind of what WordPress was all about. Did you know that WordPress was an original blogging website and then it grew and grew and grew? Anyway, when we go over to posts, I've got some fake posts here. You will notice that we have some categories. We've got two of them assigned to fake and one of them assigned to screens. I've already populated some of the content, just very quickly gonna show you that. But the main focus is how do we then do, well, how do we use bricks builder to do the single post template, just in a little bit more detail to make sure we cover it off very well. So if I go into one of these ones over here, we have a post, we've got a consultant website as a title, I've added in some text and an image and some text as well. Now over here where you got the post uh, column, please do make sure you have added in a category. So I've got uh, fake and screens. I could add in another category and call it, I don't know, uh, posts like that. That's a ridiculous category name. Never do that, but there we go. And now it's assigned to fake and post, or I might say just assign it to the fake, or I might have gone in and say, um, let's add in another one and call it a dummy. And this is gonna be a child. So now we have the dummy category as well, but it's a child of the fake post parent, but I'm not gonna do that either. But that's how easy it is. A lot of you, I think, probably do know this already, or if not, well, there you go. I hope you learned something from it. What you also want to make sure you do, though, is give it a featured image. You can also assign tags, which is great for SEO and things like that. But please make sure you pick a featured image. If you don't pick a featured image, it just means that when you do your post archive, you're not really going to have anything to show off. So have a think about that and also think about an excerpt as well. If you're not going to show an excerpt, you can leave it blank. Doing an excerpt, it is optional, but hey, I'm gonna show it to you in the single post template and the post archive, so you might wanna stick one in. Now, one of the limitations is that you do get SEO with Bricks Builder. So when you're working on your page, you'll have an SEO tab, which is great. Your title, your description, keywords, all of that, fantastic. However, you can't do that on the post yet because it's not integrated yet. Now, Bricks Builder are working with Rank Math, and I hope by the time or very near in the future, we will have that integrated. And when it is integrated, when you go to posts over here, you should have a tab for SEO. And then you can go and pump up the SEO, the keywords in your post. I think that's quite important. However, you can't do that right now straight out of the box, but it's coming, so don't worry about it. Right, so back into the WordPress dashboard, we're gonna go over to Bricks on the left-hand side. By the way, you know, it is a theme. Don't forget that. You install it, you activate it, there are some settings, but we did most of that, or we covered bits of it in our previous video, so go and watch that. Let's go over to templates over here, and we are gonna create a new single post template. So let me get rid of the one we've got here, because we're doing this all from scratch, in a way. Let's click Add New, titled it Single Post Template. Make sure over here you do pick the word single. Now, can you notice I've got lots of WooCommerce stuff as well? So when I said I don't have any plugins, I lie. WooCommerce is loaded on here as well. If you haven't got WooCommerce, everything here that says Woo would not be Woo visible. Woo visible. Brand new word I've invented. Anyway, so what we're going to do is pick single and hit edit with bricks. Now, at this point, you just have to have a bit of a think. Are you going to have all of your items stacked underneath one another? Featured image, author details, when was the post created, post content, social sharing icons, whatever. Why are you going to have it split? So you might have like two thirds of the screen might be your post content. The other third might be a bit like a sidebar. Or for details, subscribe now, related posts, blah, de, blah, de, blah. What are you going to go for? So think about your structure. What we're going to do, though, is have in effect like a container going across the top, which will have the featured image as a background. And then we'll have the title. I might have the title on it or below it. I'll have a think when I get to it. 
and then I'll have everything else stacked in a column below. So I am in effect going to have two sections. You could get away with one, but I'm just going to do two. Um, people will probably say, hey, less code, just do it all in one. But again, like I just said, I'm going to do it in two. Just get over it, okay? Please bear in mind, I'm Imran Sadiq Web Squadron. Go and check out our website, websquadron.co.uk or our video channel. If you want to learn more about business marketing, planning, analytics, seeing what our web proposal documents are as well, or just getting a bit of a head start with web design and managing a business. First thing we're going to do is add in a container. Just click the plus sign, I get section and container. If I now click on the container, I do have to make it stretch. So if I go to the layout, sorry, not the layout, the content here, I need to do align this to be stretched. It needs to go all the way to the far left and the far right because I want it to be full screen, widescreen, IMAX, okay? However, I'm not going to do that yet because I just want to show you how does it look if we didn't do that. If we go to container and we go to style and we go to background, you might hit select image, but you're not going to do that because the image must be relative to the post that comes through. So I'm going to go down here where we have the lightning bolt or dynamic data. Click that, scroll down until you get to featured image. Or you could just type a bit of it and it kind of makes it quicker to do that. So hey, we'll do that. So now we've got our featured image that is coming through. And I'm also going to ensure that this is pulling through the full resolution. If you just leave it as large or medium or thumbnail, God forbid, right, your image will have that resolution quality. So full screen image and you go and selected thumbnail, it's going to look ugly. To help this make more sense, let's pull through some content so we know what we're actually working with. Over here, we have the cog or the settings. Click that. Then go to template settings. Now, we're not going to set any conditions yet. We'll do that right at the end, but we are going to do populate content. Now, at the moment, it's not really giving us anything. So we've got to say, well, we would like this to be a single post page here. You might start clicking archive posts and all of that, but we just want to bring through one post just so we can visualize it. So let's pick that there. And then down here, we now get to pick our post. Remember, I had three of them. We'll go for Web Squadron for now, okay? And then we just hit apply preview. It kind of refreshes itself and now it brings it through. And now we've got an example post. Let's give this a bit of height, okay? I'm going to go to the container. I'm going to go to style over here. I'm going to go to layout and I'm going to give this a 30, not 30 pixels, 30 VH. 30% of the screen. If you go for 100 VH, that's 100% of the screen. So you can think a bit methodically about what you want to show. I do just want to make a point though of how this looks at the moment. If we save that and we hit preview, that is now 30% of the screen. However, it's not going all the way across. Do you remember, we've kind of lost the effect there because it's not kind of, it's doing the full stretch. Let's go back in over again. We're still in container. Go to content and over here we have the stretch. Hit that for the alignment. If we now save that, in fact, you know what I am going to say? Let's just make this be a little bit bigger. Let's go with a uh, 50%, right? Let's just go with a 50% kind of height there. Let us now save that. If we now preview now, you can see the image is now going all the way across and it is 50% of the screen. Bear in mind though, this wasn't the best image. It's not 1920 wide. It's only 1000 pixels wide. Um, so you're not going to get the greatest looking image. However, if I make it top center, it then means that when I publish it and view it, you will definitely see the top of it. If you wanted to see more of the image down here, you would make it taller in height or just make sure you've got a properly sized image. And don't forget that whatever you do here, go over into your mobile, your tablets or whatever you're doing and just make sure that it is kind of the right size. So in the mobile for the container, I'm going to go over to layout and I'm going to make this be a VH uh, 20, no, not 25, we'll go with a 30, something like that. We're now going to add in another section below and that's where we're going to add in a lot of our details. So I'm just going to Click section, so we now we have a new section column. In fact, this section, I'm just going to call this uh, featured image. Image, let's get the words right, just so we know what we're doing there. And this is now going to be all of the content. So this container, if I go to the width of this, I'm going to go over to percentage, and I'm going to make it about 75%. That means that no matter what device you're using, it's always going to be 75%. I'm also going to give this a little bit of imagination. No, let's do the imagination bit later. And you're probably thinking, what the heck are you talking about? It will make sense. I'm just going to move things up. Don't even know why I said imagination. You know, 
get over it. Right, so let's go over to the container and let's now just start adding in our components. I like to add things in, then I mess around with the margin and padding. If you do your margin and padding first, there's no harm in that, but I like to know, well, what is in there? What will stay in there? And then how is it gonna look? So I'm gonna go with the post title. We will also go, we won't go with the excerpt, okay? We won't go with the excerpt. Uh, we will also add in some social sharing icon. I'll add in the author and I think, uh, okay, metadata and post content as well. I'm gonna rearrange that obviously. So I'm gonna move the author to be underneath the post title. Social sharing, I know, and then we will, yeah, okay, we'll leave it like that. We'll leave it like that. Now that, now what this is doing is because it's populating the content, because we set that, if you recall, settings, template settings, populate content, it's bringing through the content. Do you remember? We had in our post over here. It wasn't even this one, was it? One of the posts we had, okay. It's bringing through the content. So let's now just start to rearrange how this is gonna look. Uh, if we go to post title, I can go to the content. And at the minute, this is set as a H1. You can decide if it's gonna be a H1 or a H2. Bear in mind, okay, when it comes to SEO, your H1 on the page is gonna be super, super important. So if your keywords are not in your title, they should be, and it's in like another part of your, it might be in your excerpt, for instance. Make sure you assign that to be a H1. That's just SEO tools and tips. You do have the option over here to start using some of your global styling as well that we will cover in another video. So if I go for primary, it goes to a white font. If I go to secondary, it goes to a dark font. Now I'm just gonna completely get rid of that because I'm gonna do the styling on the fly. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with styling, if you go over to the cog setting up here, you do have theme styles. And I already have some that I've got built in. So if I go to colors, I've already got some colors assigned, okay? Um, I've also got my typography, where I have said that the body over here, all of them are using the Lato family. And if you go to the all headings, uh, down here, we are also using the Lato. The Lato is a custom font, okay? Um, we did it in our previous video. What you would do is you would go over to Bricks down here, you would go to your custom fonts, and you would preload or upload your fonts that you're gonna be using. Don't know why I've got draft there, kill that one off. You, you got I got Lato and Montserrat added. Why would you do that? Well, you don't wanna be fetching Google fonts. And if you're aware of the GDPR and what's been happening in the German courts lately, you definitely wanna be preloading your fonts. I'm just saying that you don't have to. Or you could use the fonts that um, you already get preloaded with bricks as well. But sometimes using a bespoke font, which suits your clients or what you're trying to achieve can work out a whole lot better. Right, so we're now gonna go over to our post title, go over to style. Go to layout. Well, we're going to align it to the center. Um, we are then going to go to the typography over here. What is your size? I prefer to use REM. Now, the brick setting sets your um, REM or your root HTML to be 62.5% of the browser default HTML. The default one is 16 pixels. 62.5% is now 10 pixel. So if I put in over here, let me do this, five REM, five times 10, 50 pixel. If I go with three, 30 pixel. If I go with 1.6, that is now 16 pixel. So just have a think about what you're showing and what your size is. I'm gonna go with uh, four. Okay, so we're just gonna have a big bold title. And then obviously you start to mess around with, well, what is your sizing? So, you know, are you gonna go for a super bold? Are you gonna go for a, uh, a faint one as well? Let's just go with the boldy one there, number seven. Now, at the moment, uh, this container doesn't have any spacing between anything I've added. Can you see that? Everything is tightly cramped up against one another. If I go over to content, uh, we're still in our container, by the way, and I go to row gap, and I go with like 50 like that, I'm adding in a 50 pixel difference between all of them, or I could go with 20. So you can start to mess around. Please do remember though, that for this container, at the moment we are using the column approach. If I was to go with row, this is gonna happen. And then you gotta start messing around with your wrapping and your custom width, which is a piece of cake once you get your head around it. But we're just going for a standard column approach and we've put a 20 pixel gap in the way things look. 
So I'm gonna to go to author, go to layout, and down here we have the flex to put it in the center. We'll do the same with the sharing icons as well. Now I do wanna just make a little point though here. I am now doing this all individually. I just wanna show you how we could have done that with the class stars. Let me take that off, right? Let me just show you something here, right? If I go over to my author one and I go here, I'm actually gonna just type in a line uh, center like that or T-E-R if you're in America, okay? And I'm gonna hit return. That is not doing anything fanciful at the moment, right? All I've done is given it a class name. I'm now gonna go make sure I'm on the layout and I'm now gonna put this as center, right? And I'm now just gonna hit save as well, just to make sure this is all definitely saved. If I go over to my social sharing icon and I go here and I now pick a line center, it goes center. If I go to metadata, oh, we'll do a line center there as well. We'll go to post content, oh, we'll just put a line center. I mean, it's already gonna be a line because it's kind of full post content. But that is a really funky way of just putting in a line center. You create a class name for a line center. Anywhere on your website, you go, oh, I want a line center, but you don't wanna have to go in and go to the content tab and do it individually. You could just go here and click it. You could argue, well, that's no different to you just going in and click it. Well, I don't know. It feels like an, it feels a little bit more dynamic. Let me go back to author. Oh, yeah, okay, let's show my face. I don't mind. How big is it gonna be? We might go with 100 pixels. What's the position? Let's go with a top. You could add in a border or a box shadow as well. I'm not really gonna do that. I'm just gonna quickly go down to post and say, get rid of the all author posting because I didn't really like that. Because I wanna make a point about how this is not centered at the moment. So if we go to style for the author, you gotta go to typography. And over here, you need to put this in to be in the center, okay? Now it doesn't look full on center because it's a bit of a, a circular pattern going on there. Not the best image, I know, but that is actually in the center, okay? Now, social sharing icons, I'm just gonna really, really quickly just go to the content for this and get rid of loads of these. Now, before we give this a bit of spacing on the social sharing icons, we do need to make sure that this is not uh, in yellow because if we apply any spacing now, it will apply it to that class as well. So if you apply that class across your website or wherever, that's probably gonna be a, a bit of a bad move. So if I just hit clear, that now means that whatever we apply, we're only applying to the social sharing icons, um, but it is still enabled until you hit the X here. So if I do that, it is now completely removed the class, but I can put it back in. But just make sure you've hit the X there to clear it, otherwise you won't, well, you don't want to apply it everywhere you've used the class name. I hope that makes sense. So let's just go to social sharing icon. Let's go to style. Let's give this a five and a five, just to space things out a little bit. Let's now just go to the background color, which is here. I'm going to uh, assign a, well, I'm gonna give this a, a standard color. If you click over here, uh, you could create your own color uh, um, palettes. If I click the plus sign and I was to give this a name like um, whatever, and then hit create, it would create a color palette. I've already created one over here that I call new and I've already added in some colors. So let me show you how you would add a color to your palette. If I went over here, whoops, the daisy, and I type in FFF00, uh, which is yellow, and when I hit save, it adds it to my color palette, which that's not the color I want, by the way. I'm gonna use this color. Also, um, just because it is showing white right now, that is not how it will actually look on your preview. It might bring through a different color. So just make sure in your typography, you've also set your color. So let me just go to new and I'm gonna pick the white color there like that. Let me also just change some of the sizing for the fonts that we have here. So I've just put in a 20. Uh, I've, I'm, I'm gonna leave it as pixel for now. You could have done two REM to be honest. And I'm also just gonna make the icons be a little bit bigger. So if I go over here and I link, uh, and by the way, we are in social sharing icons. We're in the layout tab. If I go in and put in a 10, well, I didn't do anything, did it? 20, there we go. Um, it now starts to basically bulk them out a bit. And now I can clearly see that this 10 was way not enough there. There we go, that's looking a bit better. If we just save that and preview that now, you can see what you're getting there, okay? So we've got a bit of a layout forming now. Uh, when you get to your metadata, well, look, you can stylize it. You know, you can decide if it's gonna be stacked like that, which, oh, sorry. Sorry, 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 can I go back a step? So 
If you notice, when I go to metadata, it's got the yellow. The class name is yellow, basically. Make sure you clear that out, because if you don't, when I hit stacked or anything like that, it did it across the board. So now when I do this, it will only do it to the metadata. Just bear that in mind. Watch out for it, but it's easy to rectify, okay? Uh, I think the horizontal approach works better. You got the name. Uh, in a strange way, now it is showing my author name. So I'm just going to go back to my author over here where it currently has the name. And unfortunately, we don't have like the dynamic data facility there. Uh, I bet there is a code snippet or something we can add to rectify that. But we do have our name there. So in fact, you know what I'm going to do, right? Let's make a point here. Let's just get rid of the email address there because that's a bit pointless. Um, the metadata, I'm actually now going to just pull it up a bit like that. No, that looks ugly. I'm not feeling that when it looks like that. Anyway, metadata, we've got the name, we've got the date, and we've got the comments. I'm going to get rid of the comments. And you could, if you want now, add other metadata as well. So here's the fields that you have available to you. Um, you can choose what you want to go for, basically. I mean, look, I could have even brought through my avatar like that. <laughs> Why would you do that? But anyway, um, th there's quite a lot of stuff you could do and you could bring through other fields. OK, let me just get rid of that meta. Now, I am going to very, very quickly change this post content. The main reason being is that this is not bringing over the bold that I did on this website here. And I want to make a point about the fact that if you do bold here, it does pull it through. So let's just go over here, go to our templates, go to here, populate. There it is. Right. Consultant websites. OK, let's apply the preview. And can you now see it's brought through the bold? So we had bold over here. It has now brought it through. So if you apply that in your post without spending too much time on the styling of it, it will bring it through. So don't overly worry if you haven't got it in there. OK, anyway, typography. Let's just make sure we've got our color. I'm just going to go here and I'm going to pick black for now. And then I'm going to do the font size. We'll go with an REM of uh, let's go with two, something like that. You know, decide on how you're aligning it, you know, left aligned, centered, or you can do all of that here. So you don't have to have done your left, right align in effect in your post unless you specifically wanted a particular layout. Then come in and don't apply any of these because it will bring it through as it is in your post. Um, you can even make it, you know, uppercase, um, capitalize or not. Just leave it as normal. Don't forget, though, you have got your line height, line spacing as well. I do like to sometimes apply one or 0 0.5 just to space words out a bit because I do find it's easier to read and skim read when words are like that. But you you decide what you're going to do. Um, that, in a nutshell, is us just applying a very basic um, layout for our single post template. I've not added in comments. I've not added in related posts. You could do those. They're all over here and stuff like that, OK? But if we go back to this container at the moment, if we go to layout, OK, this does not have any um, like top or bottom border. In fact, it doesn't even have any padding on the left and right. So let's go and add some in. I'm going to go with uh, 20 on the left and well, 20 on the right and 20 on the left. Could argue I don't need to do that because it's already got a solid white background. So what was the point of it? It's just to do with when you get to mobile responsiveness and it's a force of habit I have. Now, this container, um, I'm also going to add in some padding at the top as well. I'm going to go with about 30 from the top like that. And at the bottom, I'm going to actually add in about 60. So we've just got a bit more spacing to space things out. OK, I mean, your social sharing icons could go down there as well. We're going to go to the top now and I'm going to add in some negative top margin. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go with 100 like that, which currently takes it the wrong way and put in a negative. That is now overlapping the section above. In fact, I think we definitely want to go with about 150. Something like that, because that nicely dissects the image. By the way, that was a bit of luck. I wasn't sure if it was going to be 150, but I think 150 works well. Let's now go into our container. OK, uh, go to the background and let's set a background color. You could, if you want, uh, by the way, you can pick your colors on the fly as well. You don't have to have a palette. But the reason why palettes are good is that if your client then goes, oh, I don't like that color. I want to go from red to yellow, whatever. You just change the color. So I could go with an off-white appearance like that, 
or go with the solid white. I'm going to go with solid white, actually. I think I quite, yeah, you know, that kind of works for me. I've changed that to be 60 VH. I'm going into this container and I am now just going to actually make this be about 40 and uh, 40 there. Okay, and I'm going to make this one be 40 as well. This will make sense in a moment. You'll see what I mean when you see how the pattern looks all right, because it didn't, it didn't look overly that great. If I save that now and we now preview it, can you see, because it was too close to the left and right, and you can see where this line was starting, it, start, it just looked, even though it's white on white, visually, I could see it being too close to the border, just the way my brain works. That is a very basic single post template, and I've probably spent way too long talking out my backside about it. But hold up, before we do that, let's just go over to our settings down here. Where we have the populate content, I'm actually just going to get rid of that. I'm going to go over to conditions. This is important. Hit the plus sign, and then I'm going to say that this will be applied to post type. And when you click post type, you have the option for post page or products. If you do not have WooCommerce, you will not see products. I've got WooCommerce, I can see products. So I'm going to go in and say post, and I'm now going to save that. This will now be the template used for our post, okay? And we've created it from scratch. We've messed around a bit. I've gone through some settings. I hope it made sense. Let's now go over to uh, our pages. Let's just create a brand new page, okay? I'm just going to call it, uh, in fact, no, we'll call it blog like that. Um, yeah, I'm not going to mess around here. I'm just going to hit edit with bricks. I'm not here to stylize out a page. This has got a header, by the way, a header template, which is visible on the entire website. I'm going to hit a, hit a brand new section, basically. Um, we're going to go, I'm going to leave it as a section and column because it will just, sorry, section container. There's no need to add block because I'm not going to have any additional columns. I'm going to go here now and I'm just going to type in, uh, not product, posts. And we're going to drop that in, click that. Bear in mind though, if it falls outside, you want to get it in, you can drag it in. I do want to mention though, some people have said, well, I do this, but I can't get it in the container. What you need to do is when you're dragging it, actually point onto the container. Look, if I go below, look, it won't go in. Look, left or right, it's not going in. But if you point onto the parent of where you want it to sit, it will slip in. All right. So we've got posts here at the moment. Let's go to our query. This is important now. You click on your query and you decide what are you pulling through. We are definitely pulling through posts. Uh, I'm going to leave the order by to be by date descending. So it always pulls through the latest posts first. We will have, um, well, I mean, I don't know. I'm just going to go 15. If I've got 15 posts, it will show me 15 at any one time. If I put an offset value in, so if I put offset one, okay, it will now start at post number two. So if you've got three posts, right? Uh, in whatever date order you've got it in, okay, and this is your latest post, and you do offset one, that one is now eliminated. If you do number two, the latest two are eliminated. You do three, the third one, and if you've got 15 posts, it would start from post uh, 12, because 13, 14, 15, the latest ones are kind of hidden away. That can be really cool if you're trying to do like a masonry effect where you want to have like a, 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 a unique design for your latest post and every other post follows a, um, um, a standard format. This is now where we start to decide what is going to be shown on here. Now, if I go to terms, I'm going to say what categories are we going to show here? I've got two for fake and one for screens. So if I go screens, only one post show. If I change this to be uh, fake, I get two of them showing. I could go over here and go, let's do fake and screens. So you can be very particular about, are you going to show all posts or are you only going to show certain posts? Because it might be that some of your posts, they might be advanced custom fields. There might be things about them whereby you might um, say you got a page and you're going to say, these are all the posts about football. These are all the posts about Star Wars. These are all the posts about Marvel or stuff like that. OK, so you can be very particular about what you're showing. Right back into the post. So that was the query, the layout. I'm going to say that we have it as a grid and we will show three of them. Now, I do want to make a little bit of a point here. If I go to my container, right, 
and I go to style and layout, I'm going to set this to be a width of 900, right? Can you see you have a space here, a space here, and a space here? If you go back into your post, okay, and you go to your content, and you go to your layout, it says here spacing. Now, watch what happens when I get rid of that. Now they're bang up against one another, which I don't like. I actually like the 30 spacing there. I don't want to click this where the first one is now full width because I'm still getting the spacing. There is a little bit of code you can add. Now, someone said to me, you could get rid of that using some auto styling. And I struggled to find that. I wasn't sure, like if I hit stretch, it wasn't that. And I was struggling to find where it was. So here's the solution I currently have at the moment. If you go to style, you go to CSS at the bottom. And what it does is it basically moves everything over to the, uh, the width. Maybe I'm not thinking right. Maybe I need to do something in the container or the section. I don't know why. Maybe it is this container. I don't know. I don't know why, but I was struggling to go, well, which setting is it that I need to click? I need to think a bit more about it. Anyone knows, please put it in the comments, help other people out. But we still have the 30 pixel spacing, but we have now stretched out across there. What is looking tragically ugly is that image. So if I go to image, do I want to display it or not? Do I want to link it? That means that when you hover over the image or you click it, it takes you to the post. Yeah, we do want the image to be linked. If you start messing around with the image width and the height, you'll be here for years and years and years because these images are a horizontal effect. The simple effect over here is just to go through and change how it's going to appear in the grid. Square, well, that's not going to make it any better. 4.3, nah, okay, but 16.9? we now get that horizontal approach or the landscape because all of these images are a landscape stretched out. I think they're like 1000 pixel by 400 or something ridiculously stupid like that, 500 or something. But anyway, that now works for me. Um, in terms of images, I'm going to just set them to be full because I want the full on resolution. You can go with thumbnail if you want, test it out, check how it looks on the site. Now, after this point, I think you kind of know what you're doing. You go to fields, we've got the post title, we've got the excerpt. Maybe you want to add in some more fields. So you might go, okay, um, I'm now going to add in uh, who the author is. I'm going to go in and add in uh, the author bio, the author email, the avatar. Maybe you want to add in the dates. Let's just go with a uh, date. There we go, post date, right? Don't worry about how this currently looks. By the way, I've got link in here as well. Let me get rid of that. Go to typography. And you would start to do that. Okay, so if I just scroll down here, you can see it. You can start to decide on your colors. How's it going to look? I mean, look, uh, if we click on typography, I might go here. I'm now going to pick my color. We'll give it a grayish color. In fact, we'll go with a light color like that. Uh, just click over there. Let's give this a font weighting of, say, 300. Make it really small. Uh, the size. I'm going to leave this as pixel for now. Let's just go with 10 can't even read it. Why did I pick that stupid color for? Let's go with something like that. Uh, God, you really can't. Do you know why? Do you know why you can't read it? Because that is like font weight uh, 300, which is the uh, the light Lato. If I go to 100, it would be the thin, super thin. But you get the idea of what I'm doing, okay? And if you don't get the idea, then you're a lost cause. No, you're not a lost cause. I'm just, I'm just joking there. Now, I want the content to all be in the center. So I'm just going to go over here and in content, you have alignment. I would have preferred it if you could kind of decide on how things are. So if I just go in middle center like that, that moves it in. But if I was to go over to my field and I go to post date and I go to typography and I go to text align, what if I want to put that on the right? Uh, I can't. However, with some custom CSS, you could do that. But I would have preferred it if I did if it did that. But that's just my opinion. And who am I? Also in the content area, if we go down here and we link this and give this about 20, we can move the content. It's not touching the image. If you want to touch the image, you got to go to style layout. And if I was to now link in here and do like 10, it would apply it across everything. But we're not going to do that. We're going to leave that. So the content, if you want to do some padding there or something particular, you can go away and do that. A really cool thing about posts that I think is really cool is the filter option. If I click that and I go down here and I go with, say, categories, right? You now have the categories at the top, right? 
Um, I mean, mm, I mean, <laughs> what I will say though is that it is showing me categories where there is nothing assigned. So I think that is something that still needs to be looked at. Let me get back into it. Sorry, filter. You can decide on how it's going to be aligned right on the screen. Are you going to, you know, uh, the justify doesn't actually justify at the moment. I don't know why, but I'm just going to leave it as center. You can change the styling, the background color, and let's go to typography active and just give this a purple color like that. So you could start to define, you know, you could have a different weighting and all of that. However, um, if I was to save this, can you see how I can still see the categories where there's nothing in? So if I do that, okay, I get them. But if I click dummy, I get nothing. So I'm sure there'll be a snippet or something somewhere. Again, put it in the comments if you know how to do that. But the whole um, Ajax effect there, come on, this is saving you a heap of work or an extra plugin. Hello. So this is like super, super good. Uh, and again, so if anyone goes, oh, you're getting excited about really basic stuff. Look, leave my channel. Leave me alone right yeah. I get excited because there's something worth getting excited about. And if you don't like it, get out of it. I've spent a bit more time going through the single post template and also the post archive uh, stylizing and things like that. It's really neat and efficient in how it does things, I think. And I really love the Ajax filtering for the posts as well. You know, the fact it's already built in. Remember, this is just a theme. And yes, I've got WooCommerce added in that I'm going to do in a later video. But if I didn't have WooCommerce and I was just doing a blog website, well, one theme, you have total control over what you want to do. It's not like other themes where they give you a set layout and you spend like a day and an age trying to sort it out. You can build what you want, how you want. I'm your man, Web Squad, and I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way to win it life. I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the back.